Should we seek occasions to be tempted? Does testing our faith in this way make sense? Father Pio's thrilling personal experience reveals the answer. Stay tuned to hear the story. Welcome to our YouTube channel following Padre Pio about a Capuchin friar, mystic and miracle worker whose intercession is still very powerful and active today. We publish videos three times a week on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So follow us to find out more about the life of this fascinating saint and you will be amazed at what Padre Pio can do for you, a family member or a friend. One day, Padre Pio was in his cell in the monastery when he heard a knock at the door. Wondering who it could be, he went to answer it and was surprised to find Father Agostino standing there. Now, Father Agostino was Padre Pio's close friend and confessor, but it was strange to find him there in San Giovanni since Father Agostino resided in a convent in Montefusco, approximately 150 kilometers or 93 miles away. Also, something seemed off about Father Agostino's expression. As they started talking, Father Agostino began to criticize Padre Pio's fasting and penance, saying that they were excessive and showed that he did not understand the meaning of religious life. Padre Pio was surprised by the harshness of his confessor's words, as Father Agostino had always been supportive of his spiritual practices. As the conversation continued, Father Agostino warned Padre Pio that his health problems were a clear sign that he wouldn't be able to handle living in San Giovanni for much longer. This made no sense to Padre Pio, as he always believed that his devotion and sacrifice were pleasing to God. Father Agostino continued, suggesting Padre Pio didn't need to stay in the convent to become a saint. He could do so in the world where he could have a more fruitful apostolate. He even questioned the stories of diabolical vexations that had been circulating, implying they were just products of a sick mind, or at best a product of an overly imaginative mind. He advised Padre Pio to return home and take time to regain his physical strength. Then he could renew his request for admission to the convent, which would surely be accepted. Father Agostino spoke with a demeanor that stunned Padre Pio. It was not the typical behavior he was accustomed to seeing from him. Sensing something was amiss, Padre Pio silently called upon divine help and waited for an opportunity to speak. When Father Agostino paused to take a breath, Padre Pio spoke up and asked him to help him implore heaven for help. You know well, Father, that for me what matters is the will of God. To strengthen myself in this disposition, I would like you to help me implore heaven for help, saying loudly with me, Long live Jesus. Suddenly, the strange character that had been with him vanished in the blink of an eye, leaving behind a foul smell. This incident strengthened Padre Pio's determination to continue his spiritual journey, no matter what obstacles he might encounter along the way. He knew that his penance and fasting were a way of getting closer to God and that he must remain steadfast in his faith. Now most of us would find this event quite scary and not something we'd willingly go through. But I found out that there was once a nun who wished to be tempted by operations from the devil to test her faith, albeit with good intentions. However, Padre Pio wrote her a letter in 1918 cautioning against such a desire. He recommended that one repel the temptation to have apparitions as the enemy can take advantage of this disposition to confuse and lead one astray. Padre Pio spoke from personal experience when he shared, It is truly incredible, but this miserable renegade can disguise himself even as a Capuchin and with the face of a dear friend. Believe the words of someone who knows this from experience. Now let's put this into a modern-day, everyday life context since most of us do not go looking for visions of the devil. Here's what St. Alphonsus of Liguri had to say about occasions of sin. St. John the Evangelist recounts, When the doors were shut, where the disciples were gathered together for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst. On this scriptural passage, St. Thomas Aquinas comments 
that the mystical meaning of this miracle is that the Lord does not enter into our souls unless we keep the doors of the senses shut. If we wish Jesus Christ to dwell within us, we must keep the doors of our senses closed against dangerous occasions. Otherwise, the devil will make us his slaves. So anyone who wishes to save his soul must not only abandon sin, but also the occasion of sin. In other words, he must renounce going to certain places, he must renounce certain wicked companions, as well as all similar occasions that incite him to sin. St. Bernardine of Siena teaches that the counsel of avoiding the occasions of sin is the best of all counsels, and as it were, the foundation of religion. The ruin of our first parents arose from their not flying away from the occasions of sin. God had prohibited them not only to eat, but even to touch the forbidden apple. In answer to the serpent tempting her, Eve said, God has commanded us that we should not eat and that we should not touch it. But she saw, took, and ate the forbidden fruit. She first looked at it, she then took it into her hands, and afterwards ate it. This is what ordinarily happens to all who expose themselves to the occasions of sin. On a certain occasion the devil, being once compelled by exorcisms to tell which sermon displeased him the most, he confessed that it was the sermons on avoiding the occasions of sin, because as long as we expose ourselves to the occasions of sin, the devil laughs at all our good purposes and promises made to God. He that is aware of the snares shall be secure. But if instead of withdrawing from them, a Christian approaches them, how can he avoid being caught by them? Of course, the devil is careful to find pretexts to make us believe that certain occasions to which we expose ourselves are not voluntary, but necessary. When the occasion in which we are placed is really necessary, the Lord always helps us to avoid sin. But we sometimes imagine certain necessities which are not sufficient to excuse us. St. Cyprian says, A treasure is never safe as long as a robber is harbored within, nor is a lamp secure while it dwells in the same den as a wolf. Thus, St. Alphonsus of Liguri and Padre Pio are very clear that to seek or to expose oneself to temptation is not an advisable way to strengthen our faith, rather much to the contrary. As Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thank you for listening. Please give our channel a boost by continuing to watch another video. This will help with the YouTube algorithm. I have recommended some videos especially chosen for you on the end screen, or just click on one of the links in the description below for a full selection of great Padre Pio stories. And don't forget to enroll your Mass intentions for next Friday's Padre Pio Holy Mass. You will find the link in the description below. And stay tuned for the next video on the life of Padre Pio.